Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are painting a very classic, almost vintage-like Christmas wreath. You can use this for Christmas cards, you can hang it up in your home, whatever you like, but I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process on how to paint it. I'm using 140 pound cold press watercolor paper, a Polina Bright round brush size 1, and Windsor Newton professional paints. So the first thing I do so that I get an idea of where everything is going to sit is I draw a very light circle for the shape of my wreath. And then with that circle as a visual, I sketch out my Merry Christmas banner. And the reason I sketch that out first is because I need to know where that is so that I can place the other elements around it. So the steps of the banner are pretty simple. You draw two lines that are parallel to each other, and I like my banner to be a little bit curved. It makes it feel more natural because it wouldn't be totally stiff and straight, right? And then you do a little S shape at the top, which allows for your banner to have a little ripple in it. And then make sure that the end of your tail hits above the end of your ribbon so that you can see that tail behind that side, if that makes sense, I hope that makes sense. And then again, you will draw another S shape going downward on this left side, bring the line down, and then make sure the bottom of your tail is below your banner. In the center, just below my banner, I'm sketching the ribbon. And I start with the knot. It's kind of a rounded rectangle shape. And then I draw the loops of the ribbon to the side here. I'm not actually sure what these are called. The loops sound pretty good. <laughs> and I'm making sure they droop just a bit so they look realistic. And I'm also giving myself a visual of the top part of the ribbon where we can kind of peek inside the loop so that I can make sure to paint that area darker for shadow. And then just coming down and drawing the little tails of my ribbon, adding the little cut in flare to the bottom. So I'm using a really bright red color and I'm painting the front of the loop of the bow first and I'm leaving some white space to give the illusion of wrinkles in the bow as it gets closer to the knot. Now I'm taking a really dark pigment of red and I'm painting the inside of our bow loops. This is the part of the bow where we can see a little bit inside those loops and that's where it will be more shadowed and so we're painting it a darker red and just kind of letting it blend in for a nice little effect. And I'm painting the knot in a very similar way. I'm leaving a little bit of white space for the kind of wrinkles that would happen when a bow has the middle knot together and then I am just painting these tails that are coming off the bow a really solid color leaving white space between the tails and the bow loops so that we can see the distinction between them and now we get to paint the wreath and the most important part about forming your wreath is making sure you paint your large elements first and for us in this wreath the large element is the pine cones so to paint pine cones, you take a brown color and you just start at the top making some really small, almost dot-like shapes. And then as you come lower and lower down the cone, creating that cone shape, you're doing like these little half circles that are staggered together. And the great thing about pine cones is they really can be all kinds of different shapes. They don't have to be perfect, especially in this loose style. So what I like to do when I'm placing my large elements around my wreath, and keep in mind, I've got a really light pencil sketch that is helping me keep the entire wreath in my sight while I'm painting these large elements. So the important thing is to go around and place them in different directions, put some that are 
by themselves, some with two, some that are smaller, some that are larger, some that are hidden behind this banner, some that we're only seeing half of. The main goal is to just keep the wreath in your mind's eye and to see the final picture and where you want all of these cones to be. And then the next element we're painting are the berries. And it's the same thing with the berries. You know, they're very simple. We're painting little circles. I'm keeping some white space in the center of some of them. And you're going to want to bunch quite a few of them together. They're not really found on their own. But it's the same thing with the berries as far as making sure they're going in different directions, making sure they're varied in the number that you have together in certain areas, making sure that you have a balance between right side and left side and that there's some pointing up and some pointing down and just kind of picturing it all coming together standing back and looking at your painting as you're painting these elements to make sure that everything is looking balanced and now that we have our main elements in we get to add all of our pine needles for the majority of our wreath so i'm starting with a light green and this is going to be the main color that we're using and then later we'll go in with a darker green to add the contrasting more shadowy color and so the main thing to keep in mind is using really light pressure with the very tip of your brush you're going to create these little clusters so if you picture in your mind a pine branch they aren't just one lump of green pine needles right they have different clusters they go in all different directions some are shorter some are longer so just switch everything up and make sure that some are hanging in different directions and maybe off shooting a little bit and it will look really natural and organic And don't forget to step back and look at your painting and see where pine needles are needed to balance out the entire wreath. And now I'm going in and I'm grounding all of these little elements. So I'm using a dark brown color to add the stems to the berries. I'm using that same brown color to add dimension and contrast to the pine cones. I'm using that brown color to add stems to the little tufts of pine needles. And so everything is attached and grounded and looks like it's all starting to come together, that it's one piece and not just elements that are floating out in space. And now I'm going in with my dark bluish green color to add the contrasting pine needles. So adding a contrasting color to your wreath to almost anything is really important because it makes everything pop. So having one color is just really flat. Having two colors where one color acts as a highlight and one color acts as a shadow is really interesting and really grabs the eye. And you can tell the difference between the right side and the left side as I'm finishing with the contrasting color on the right side and how much more vibrant and alive and almost realistic that it looks on the right. And I'm not just painting pine needles. You can see here in some of the areas where there's too much white space, I'm using this dark color to make really dark blobs almost like shadows and this really helps because if there's too much white space it looks really disconnected and unfinished and so we want to fill in some of those gaps with a darker color again for shadow you don't want to cover up too much of the light green but you want enough of both colors so that you can see the contrast with the light wash of dark green i am also creating a little shadow right under our banner and now we get to start on the banner. So I'm using a light brown color, very similar to the color I used for the pine cones because I like keeping all of the tones really similar. And we're just going to paint a really light wash. We want the area in the middle 
of our banner to be really light so that we can write Merry Christmas and it will be easily visible and easy to read. While the banner is still wet, I am running that same brown color in a darker pigment around the edges so that it will bleed up into the banner and the center will still stay light, but we have some more contrast of color as it goes to the edges of the banner. This little tail on the right side of the banner is going to be darker because it's behind the center of the banner. And then this tail on the left side is going to have a darker element on that inside curve, but the shadow is going to be on the front of the banner right here. So I'm just continuing to add darkness where there should be shadows and outlining the edges of the banner so that we can see it against the wreath. And now we're going to write our saying, and I'm going to write Merry Christmas, but you can write Happy Holidays, you can write your family's last name, you can write Joy to the World, you can write anything that you want. And I think this would be a beautiful Christmas card, but you could also hang it up in your home for the holidays as well. So we lost some of the details of the pine needles that were overlapping our banner and so I'm going back in and adding that because I love that. I think it makes it look like the banner is sitting in the Christmas wreath. And that is it. Thank you guys so much for being here today while we painted this vintage style Christmas wreath. It's so classic and I hope you find it useful when you're painting your own Christmas cards or if you're looking for some decoration for your own home for the holidays. I will see you guys next time. Bye.